Leonardo de Toledo. This court of justice has found you guilty of murder and theft. As monk and a servant of God, you have not only allied yourself with the devil, you have also attempted to corrupt the innocent soul of a boy who is destined to serve our Lord. You have incited the child to act as your accomplice in the course of all of your repugnant deeds. The boy's confession saved him. As for you, only the flames can save your soul. Have you anything to say on your behalf? You're going to burn an innocent man at the stake. They all say the same when bound to this stake and with death facing them, Leonardo. I'm merely telling the truth. God have mercy. You know that I'm innocent. And if you set me free, I'll bring you the real killer. Of course you will. And the mysterious, diabolical killer will be free to take your place at the stake, won't he? What did you say? You'll accuse the first person who comes to mind. I don't intend to allow an innocent man to pay for your crimes. But I can tell you now who the killer is. Listen to the words of a condemned soul, brothers. Hear how he proclaims his innocence after having made a pact with Beelzebub. Remember that the devil deceives. Recall that the Holy Scriptures command us to stay far from temptation. Recall that. Nazario of Milan. I am innocent. Curse you and all you stand for. I'm innocent. No one who ends up where you are is innocent, Leonardo. You've always wanted to see me here, and now you've finally achieved that. But you're wrong. I haven't done a thing, and I know who the killer is. Is that right? And why should I believe the lies of a deceitful heretic? Guards, the torch. You'll burn eternally in hell for this. Though the only one who's going to burn today is you. It's said that the Dominicans are the dogs of God, but you're the devil's vulture. We are condemning your body to save your soul. This shall serve as an example to all those who resolve to turn their backs on God and heed the call of evil. Poor Leonardo. First he fell out of grace with the Emperor. Now he squandered the grace of God. Justice will have its due, Nazario, and you shall repent. You can talk as much as you want before your tongue feeds the flames. Farewell, Leonardo. Receive the flame of eternal purification. No, he's innocent. Are you getting hot? <laughs> <laughs> and now comes the worst part. I don't want to watch that. You're right. You never get used to it, do you? Oh, God. So that's how I squandered the grace of God, hmm? Master. Uh, 
I'm so sorry. I, I thought you had some kind of contact with the devil. I... You made me desecrate things and... It was not desecration. We were searching for the truth. I see that now, Master. It was your fault that I nearly died. God help us. What made you think of accusing me? What the devil gave you such ideas? I was scared. Nazario. He frightened me and I... 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 Frightened? Have I ever taught you to fear telling the truth? No. I learnt enough about that from my father. Nor were you taught to weep like a little boy. Why are you crying? Because you received a few deserved strokes of the lash? No, because... No. Please, don't leave me here alone. Will you stand by me, no matter what? Because you can rest assured that you are going to see a monstrous demon. Are you ready to follow me to the bitter end? Yes. Yes, what? Yes, Master. Good. We're off, Bruno. Where... where are we going? We're going to finish this once and for all. The final hour has come. Bruno, stay near the doorway. It would be better. If you say so, Master. Thomas? Huh? Well, well. Brother Leonardo de Toledo. I thought by this stage you'd already be burning in the flames of hell. That way the culprit would have been found and eliminated by the Holy Inquisition. Everything would have gone back to normal and you could have carried on with your plans. Let's not beat around the bush, Leonardo. Do you really believe that? I'd have thought you were much more intelligent. Do you think it bothers me if the truth comes to light? Not anymore. At this stage, there's no turning back. Are you saying you're going to carry out the invocation to the end? Is that the last step? It's already been done. After you were arrested, I set to work on the translation. I followed the instructions to the letter. I have the book, the pentagram, and the elements. I spent years searching desperately for them until I spied them here at this library. I knew that the book would end up here sooner or later, and that I'd find it. I settled down here and waited 16 long years. Until Bruno and I appeared with the book. What about the book? It belonged to my father. He was a genius. He knew a great deal about alchemy and the occult arts. A long time ago, a story was told that the few copies of this book in existence that had belonged to a sect of heretics had been destroyed. But evil never allows itself to be wiped out completely. My father got hold of fragments that had survived and then reconstructed the book through the research he did. But in the end, it all came to naught due to the Inquisition and Nazario of Milan. Yes, I remember that story because it had something to do with my departure from the Emperor's court. I never understood why Nazario and the Emperor were so possessed by heretical books until I realized what was being hatched in this library. You're not to blame. You're merely another victim of a hoax they've been carrying on with for years. Power corrupts not only the nobility, it even takes hold of our own members of the church. The Emperor believed that he could use his entire knowledge of heresy to his advantage. Satanic books, diabolical rituals, alchemy. To all intents and purposes, every book found in all of Christianity was burnt in the bonfires. But with Nazario as an ally, in reality, they were sent here, translated and archived. If I presume correctly, in the insane hope that they would serve his interests. Of course. Can you imagine an army of immortal demons? Spells that can transform good, pious people into little more than brute animals? That's too much power to leave in the hands of people with such limited minds like the Emperor or Nazario. It's the right of the gifted, like me! We have the right to make use of them! No one has the right to commit abominable deeds like the ones which have occurred here over the last few days. Would it give you some kind of satisfaction to tell me my sins to my face? Wasn't Godfrey aware that you intended to take his place? That mentally retarded oaf? A fool like him should never have been allowed to become assistant librarian in the first place. No, he thought occultism was merely an innocent game. I think he never believed in the power of Satan. He never feared him or paid him the respect we have for him. 
That's why he secretly lent Anselmo books, didn't he? Anselmo was insolent. He never accepted his lot at the Abbey. He was preoccupied with constantly improving himself and getting ahead, nothing else. That's why he was punished, and despite his experience as a copyist, he was demoted to gatekeeper. There is something almost comical about giving all the keys to the Abbey, in other words, those that enable you to leave the Edificium and enter the library too, to the one person who had the most interest in the library's secrets. Apart from you, of course. Yes, of course. I've had my eyes on those books since I arrived here. Did they really think I wouldn't notice what's going on here? That I wouldn't associate the sounds at night in the Edificium with the rumors of phantasmagoric apparitions in the library? And you blackmailed Godfried with accusing him in front of the abbot if he refused to give you the books. Yes, he let me leaf through some ancient manuscripts in which the architects of the abbey illustrated how to move around in the secret passages. Learning that brought me enormous satisfaction. Even though Godfried was too much of a coward to allow me access to the upper floors, I was able to study the secret index, and he brought me any volume I desired into the scriptorium. When you appeared, and I heard that this book was finally going to be catalogued, I thought that my quest would soon be over and done with. Yet it was precisely my arrival and the abbot's request to investigate Anselmo's death that interrupted your activities. Godfried was afraid of being caught and destroyed the evidence. The parchment from the crypt was safe, even though he wasn't able to get it out of Anselmo's desk. He didn't have the key, so he assumed that no one else would get their hands on it either. But the illustration that provided access to the library... I must admit it was quite clever to hide the sheet of paper in Anselmo's grave. No monk would have dared to do, yes, well, what I did. A very intelligent move on his part. Intelligent? Godfried? He surely hid it there because no other place occurred to him. Or because he did it that night when we... If I've learned one thing, it's never to underestimate someone's intelligence. It's sufficiently clear that on the night when he was alone with you in the cemetery, he prepared everything he did in the event that you might kill him. With an alibi, and no witnesses. I thought he would give me the book. Instead, I found him stuttering and trembling with fear because Brother Leonardo was going to discover his secret and he would be excommunicated. A whimpering coward! I know, but the way you did away with him. You dragged him across the cemetery and hid him in the cemetery chapel. You knew we'd find him the next day, yet even that didn't matter to you. I beg your pardon, but you're not as smart as you think. You're not capable of grasping my plan down to the last minute detail. I didn't care what would happen with Godfrey's body. I thought that by obtaining access to the library, I would get access to the book. And once I had the sorcerer's spell in my hands, nothing else would have been important anyway. You were the one who received Anselmo's parchment, the one that Godfrey had stolen from our room, weren't you? I think the moment that truly terrified Godfried was when he saw that only one day after your arrival you were already able to open Anselmo's desk and get hold of the parchment which could incriminate him. That's why he broke into your room and stole it from you. I took it away from him at the cemetery and intended to destroy it. But once you established that you weren't able to read the invocation spell without the help of a translator, you gave it to Umberto so that he could sneak out of the edificium that night. I presume he refused to give you the parchment as soon as he grasped the meaning of what he had translated. Fui! His cowardliness was probably even greater than his greed. Umberto told me that he wouldn't give me the translation under any circumstances, but I knew he wasn't stupid, that he wouldn't destroy anything of value, which meant he had to keep it hidden in a secret place. I strangled him with my belt sash. That's what I thought. You weren't wearing the sash that afternoon. I presume your anger got the better of you again. Aren't you listening to me? I'm not easily angered. It was all part of my plan. He had health problems, something to do with his vagus nerve, and asphyxiated quickly. It hardly left a mark. With health problems like that, he must have gone to the Abbey's doctor often, to my friend Eladio. Perhaps that's how the two of them developed such a close relationship. They already knew each other. They always kept up a peculiar form of camaraderie. They were thick as thieves, but never seemed to be friends. 
When Nazario told me of his past at the tribunal, I realized that the translation would be there, in the hospital. All right, so much for the translation. What about the book? I searched Umberto's workplace with a fine-toothed comb, but there wasn't much time. I didn't find the translation there, so I went away with the book in my hand. Marcelo saw me. That left me with no other choice than to hide it. I mixed it in with the other tomes on my desk, then went up to the library to give them all back. The book would be safe there until nightfall. I see. Because you needed the book, too. The translation alone wasn't enough. I can't imagine that Umberto hadn't copied Saturn's pentagram, a necessary part of the invocation. Umberto is a translator, not a copyist. It was easier to use the drawing from the book and read the translation from Umberto's parchment out loud. That's why I went to the library that night, to get the book again. Yet you were so impatient to see if the drawing would do what it's supposed to do, that you had to try it out in the library right away? What kind of sense does that make? Why not? Was there a better place? No one could see me, except perhaps some monk who had to go out at night because he had fallen ill. Otherwise, no one could go up there and come into the library. Aha! But you hadn't reckoned with Bruno and me. You were so beside yourself when you heard us that you tore the page with the pentagram out of the book and fled. You left everything else behind the way it was, including the book. I see it gives you great satisfaction to interfere with my plans. It looks like my interference bothered you enough for you to make a mistake. What? Once we found the pentagram in the library, I knew it was you. Only two brothers had access to those rooms at the time, and only one of them, to put it in a nutshell, displayed a great interest in occultism. Aha! Uh -huh. In other words, it couldn't have been anyone else who had the key. You, for example. It could have been. But when Nazario accused me at the tribunal and found the tarot card, you couldn't stop yourself from pouring more oil into the flames in order to get me out of the way and get your hands on the translation again. You had to open your mouth. You called out that the picture on the card was similar to the drawing in the library. But at that point in time, you wouldn't have been permitted to have any more access to the library. Because the Inquisition had forbidden it. But... You didn't give it any thought. It was impulsive, and it was a mistake. No! For my part, I held you for a weak suspect, simply unable to do something like that. I didn't understand how someone like you, educated, calm, seemingly rational, could commit murders of such obviously uncontrollable wrath. When I questioned you, I couldn't find any trace of nervousness, of the normal reaction someone shows who has a guilty conscience or something to hide. I merely found you a bit peculiar. It seemed as if the consequences of what happened weren't important to you, as if they had nothing to do with you, as if someone else had committed the murders. You're not getting the point, Leonardo. I've already told you, it was all part of a master plan to... Don't make me laugh. A plan? Splitting open someone's head who could help you to get what you wanted? To suddenly throttle the only one who could translate what you had waited for for years? Nazario was right, and I couldn't see it at the time. We mustn't look for a methodical killer here. We're looking for a quick-tempered demon who is taking his place. It was all because of the book. I had to have the book. Oh, come on, Thomas. Don't you listen to your own words? Do you think that the work of a copyist in the library, the meticulous and painstaking care taken for our culture, the intelligent planning over years to obtain a coveted object, granted all traits of a normal human being, are compatible with the brutal, violent person who murders his own brothers? No. Yes! I, I mean, no! I'll tell you what I think. You're sick. Your mind doesn't function. You have abandoned the path of our Lord in favor of a superstitious belief in things that are stupid and senseless. And all because your imagination tells you they'll give you power. I'll free myself. You'll see. I'm going to finish the invocation. And you'll all see! Yeah, I'm sure. Hear me, O oh my Lord Satan. Speak the seven words of invocation. Free your slave! 
Sobek! Sekmet! Free you? It's your sickness that has set your mind free, that eats you up bit by bit. I presume you've appeared out of thin air now and then, haven't you? That's why Gottfried was so afraid of you. Berserk must come! He must take hold of me! Sokar! Selket! Do you want to invoke a demon, Thomas? You don't need any sorcery for that. You're already possessed by the demon of madness. No! What? Stop! Stop! Moot! Moot! Free me! <laughs> Berserk is here! Ha 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 ha! Fire! Fire! You won't get away, you murderer! You dare to put yourself in the path of a powerful demon, you insolent boy? Not you. You're not a demon. You're a madman. Then die! Brother Thomas, you're not yourself! Let the boy go! Immediately! I'm not Thomas anymore. As Thomas, I can merely kill them one after another. I am berserk now. I'll take all of you with me. Together with me, you'll learn what Hellfire is. Thomas? Huh? As you like fire so much, let's see what it does to the book you've set your heart on. No! No! Ah! What a horrible death! That was the last in a series of macabre deeds. But they're finally over with now. What the devil is this? Master? I don't know what satanic power enabled you to escape from burning at the stake. But I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. No, he's innocent. I saw the whole thing. We all saw it, Nazario. Didn't you hear the words that leapt out of Thomas's mouth? He's your killer. He is responsible for the murders. Do you believe that, Brother Marcelo? Come, my esteemed abbot. Faith cannot be placed in one who has been possessed by the devil. Thomas was possessed by evil. And evil always attempts to deceive us with fallacies and lies. And without a doubt, this is a major deception. Thomas cannot be guilty of Anselmo's death. We all know that he wasn't at the Abbey at the time of death. That's bad news for you, isn't it? I beg your pardon? Speak clearly, Brother Leonardo. I'd be glad to. If I were him, if your community were to accept that Thomas had killed Anselmo, that would let you off the hook completely. Are you insinuating that I... Brothers, Secundo was the one who cut the rope to the censor that killed Anselmo. Me? Me? But why should I do away with Anselmo? It's true that you had no motive for doing away with Anselmo. But Anselmo wasn't alone. What? 
You planned it carefully. You knew the abbot frequently took walks to the crypt and back. One day, the rope holding the sensor would break, and the abbot would be the victim of a tragic accident. Wasn't that the plan? I... I... So you used one of Nicholas's tools, a pair of hedge clippers for Arcadio, who had ordered them and never received them. You went to work on slitting through the rope, but it was stronger than you had thought. The clippers were damaged, and it took you a few seconds longer to cut clean through. As a consequence, the abbot was able to step back in time, and that fatal coincidence led to the sensor falling on poor Anselmo. You have no proof, no proof at all. But you also knew that Nicholas is very conscientious. It didn't take long for him to notice the clippers were missing, and you couldn't put them back where they came from. At least, not until you had repaired the damage. So you sent Nicholas off to get charcoal outside the abbey. Now that Nicholas was gone after some makeshift repairs, you put them back in their place. But as you were coming out of the smithy, I spotted you. That is a lie. What a huge falsehood. No, it's true. Segundo didn't fix the clippers. He had me do the work. Now I understand why he wanted to keep it a big secret. Now you'll believe what Egidio says too? When he has told you his story, you'll see that you cannot put any faith in him. He and Leonardo are accomplices. Leonardo, please continue. With the greatest of pleasure, father. Segundo logically would have been the next in line to become abbot. We mustn't forget that he has very influential friends. Um... Once your plan failed and the abbot commissioned me with the investigation here, you applied pressure so that Nazario would come as soon as possible. Because you knew he would try to get me out of the picture. What you weren't aware of is that Nicholas guessed what had happened to the clippers. He found it strange that of all days, you had chosen that one to send him out to get charcoal for no reason at all. The barrel of charcoal at the entrance to the smithy is still sealed, because Nicholas still has his own one, which is almost full. That's true. Yes, hmm. Nicholas came to me last night and asked if he could talk with me. He wanted to warn me about a person whom I trust. But in light of the course events had taken, I thought he meant you, Brother Leonardo. No. Nicholas suspected that Segundo had something to do with Anselmo's death. Segundo realized that, so he decided to do something about it. If he were able to kill Nicholas and have the blame placed on me, the blacksmith would have been silenced, Segundo would have been rid of me, and what's even better, Nazario would have thought that much better of him. Once I was out of the game, he could have killed the abbot and accused Nazario of negligence and incompetence for not finding the culprit. Perhaps these are all merely presumptions. Handing over the wrong culprit to the Emperor, taking Nazario's place, and who knows what else. Aha. Uh -huh. Have you any proof? I have some. After Vespers, Segundo bought me a glass and a piece of parchment. Then he instructed me to get rid of them. But here they are, Reverend Abbot. Hmm. A glass of aconite and the prescription from Eladio made out to Segundo's name and signed by him. Quite an eloquent twist, I'd say. I beg you, most illustrious reverend. Are you going to believe these heresies? This is ridiculous. We should be passing judgment on him for heresy and condemn him. Brother Segundo, you shall be banned from this abbey, and I am going to personally request that you be excommunicated. As for you, Nazario, your work is done here, too. But... the devil? Nothing remains to be clarified. The man who requested the help of the Holy Inquisition is one of the culprits. A justified reason for your presence here no longer exists. I'm sure it will be of greater use elsewhere. Do not be blinded when you seek the devil in another's house, and watch out that he doesn't enter yours. You'll hear from me, Leonardo. And it won't be pleasant news, believe me. I believe you. Thank you very much, Leonardo. Without your wisdom, 
we would never have found out the truth. I regret that they had to be such terrible truths, Father. Will you tell us someday how you managed to escape from being burnt at the stake? I've already told you. It was with God's help. I am not familiar with Mazario in your past, but I fear that your future with him is probably going to look rather dark. Take care of yourself. Don't trouble yourself. I will. Master! Bruno, Bruno. The time has come for us to part. We've come all this way together. I... I... Learn as much as you can. When you've become a great monk, I'll come back and give you the 40 lashes of the whip I still owe you. Uh, I'm going to miss you, Master. Where are you off to now? I think it's time to return to the Emperor's court. It may turn out to be dangerous, but there's a time when I must face my past. The events here have given me food for thought, and I think it was wrong to have gone away back then. What do you mean by that? Someone has to keep an eye on the Emperor's craving for power. What has happened here was merely a warning from our Lord. It pointed out to us what can happen if the Emperor fails to watch out and acts rashly. Wise words, brother. Go in peace and count on my support. I'll do that. I'm going to speak with the brothers of my order and... Oh well, with the Empress too, if it's necessary. I wish you luck. You'll need it. And on the journey there, who knows? Perhaps I'll write my memoirs. What? <laughs> don't worry, Father. I don't think that anyone would read them. Peace. Peace, brothers. Peace. <laughs>